what is up guys, MKBHD here, and welcome to the iPhone XS full review. So this is gonna be a pretty easy review since we know that the S year iPhones are always a pretty incremental upgrade. So I've been using this gold XS Max from the unboxing every day since keynote day, and everything I say here will apply to both the XS and the XS Max, unless I say otherwise, I'll make it clear. So the template here will be simple. Every single thing that's new and what I think of it. Also XS Max, XS, extra small, Max, terrible name, just saying. Okay, moving on. So first up on the outside, this phone's almost exactly the same, almost. If I were to put the iPhone XS next to the iPhone X, you have a hard time telling which is which, except for a few key things. First of all, the new color, of course, gold. And I kind of dig this gold. This has been a more actually polarizing color in my timeline where I've seen some people that love it and then some people that are like not amused by it at all. I just kind of don't mind it, but I definitely went for the space gray on my personal phone. But this gold doesn't look bad. It's kind of like a band-aid color, but more saturated, a little more rich than that. And then the stainless steel sides are like really gold. They're the most striking part of this new phone. And the iPhone XS also has two more visible antenna on the stainless steel band around the outside, one at the top, right above the camera module, and one down at the bottom, kind of cutting into the speaker grill. So the speaker grill at the bottom is actually now asymmetrical, thanks to that bottom band. That is a weird look. You would think of all companies, Apple would find a different place to put that to keep it perfectly good looking, but I guess not. And then the other little observation I found, the camera module of the XS seems to be slightly larger, but it's very slight. The only way you can tell is if you put a case on the phone. So if you put a XS case on a XS, you can see it fits perfectly. It's very snug, it's made by Apple, they know the exact dimensions, they get it right. But if you put this same XS case on the iPhone X, you actually end up with this little gap around the bottom. So the extra room means the camera module here is a bit smaller on the X. So yeah, technically these phones aren't quite the same exactly on the outside, but these couple of things don't really matter all that much to using it. It's still a glass sandwich phone, still the same weight and feel in the hand, same design, same button placement, same mute switch, same curved corners, same notch, and same fingerprint magnet glass. We've seen this before. It of course also means it's perfectly smart to put a case or a skin on this one again. You already know I'm more of a skin person and dbrand is actually launching this absolutely sick matte black matrix skin with this new iPhone right now. Definitely worth checking out. I'll drop a link below. Oh, and one more hardware difference. Technically, internally, this new phone is IP68 water resistant where the iPhone 10 was just IP67. It's, uh, it's a big deal. For those of you who don't know, IP67 means you're rated for one meter underwater for 30 straight minutes. IP68 means you're rated for 1.5 meters underwater for 30 straight minutes. Great, anyway, all the other differences of the iPhone XS are internal, and that's what you get with an S upgrade, but honestly, that's what a lot of people were waiting for. You're getting the best or newest design Apple has with their best specs as well. So this year, as you've heard, it's the new seven nanometer, six core A12 Bionic chip and four gigs of RAM in both phones too. It's not like one has less RAM than the other, they're both set. And it ended up with some pretty damn good Geekbench scores, and they've said it's 15 to possibly 30% faster in some actions like opening apps, opening the keyboard, launching the camera, things like that. And I can verify that this is an extremely fast phone. As a matter of fact, I think it brings it right back up to the king of responsiveness as far as smartphones go. It was getting kind of passed up a little bit with Android phones of the past couple years, but iOS 12 is so buttery that it's back on the throne. But here's the thing, that iOS 12 update is also extremely fast on last year's iPhone 10. In fact, I am not noticing like a major difference in speed between iPhone 10 with iOS 12 and iPhone 10s with iOS 12. It's definitely performing great, don't get me wrong, but the fact that my year old iPhone 10 running that iOS 12 beta for a while and now on the final version was already noticeably faster than iOS 11 was a big deal. It's kind of like a curse Apple's put on themselves this time for actually maintaining and updating their phones well this time in a way that makes the phone faster makes people with an older phone now like more satisfied and less likely to upgrade. The real interesting part here is with the bugs I was getting, especially in the XS Max with iOS 12, I'm pretty sure it's because of the new resolution, but a lot of apps that I use on the daily had a bunch of like overlapping graphics or would cut parts off in the notch where they weren't supposed to. I couldn't even read the caption I was typing on Instagram. It was fully hidden in the notch, 
but I'm pretty sure a lot of the stuff will be fixed pretty quickly as phones come out and they develop for the new resolution. None of it was actually crashing or ruining the phone. It's just weird graphic quirks. So the only place I actually feel the iPhone XS actually seems a bit faster is Face ID. And it's not even that much crazy faster. I definitely think the pause to unlock your phone is a bit shorter, which is nice to see, maybe 25% faster, thanks to the A12 Bionic and iOS 12 but it's still obviously not as fast as those crazy quick ones from OnePlus or Xiaomi that are just using the RGB cameras. Then again, it will always be slower than those because it will also always be more secure. Sort of an inverse relationship there, no biggie. I am personally hoping for fingerprint readers underneath the display glass in mainstream phones to become more of a thing with this next upcoming generation. Like it's rumored that OnePlus 6T may have it. It's rumored that Galaxy S10 may have it. And it's rumored that iPhone 11 or whatever it's called may also have it next year but not this time. Another small improvement is the much better speakers in the 10s. They're a bit louder and clearer now, and the stereo speaker effect is now actually really quite good. It's still using that earpiece plus the bottom speaker to technically make a stereo pair, and this makes a difference for all kinds of the media you're listening to or music or watching videos or shows or even gaming. I'd say it went from having a decent speaker to a very good speaker set. And the battery is one of the tiniest improvements in my experience. They're still one day phones, both of them, although now iOS 12 gives you actually screen on time. So I can tell you with my whole week with the 10s Max, I was consistently getting four to four and a half hours of screen on time uh, lasting all day. Very similar to iPhone 10, not markedly much better, definitely not worse. Still a great standby phone, but otherwise nothing too crazy to report here. Really the shame is still how long it takes to charge these huge batteries with the slow charger included in the box. So then last but not least is probably the most hyped new upgrade for these phones, aside from the specs, and that would be the cameras. The iPhone XS and XS Max share the exact same cameras and they're a slight upgrade from the 10 physically. They're slightly larger new sensors, still 12 megapixels. The main one is f1.8, and they're now both optically stabilized, and there's a quad LED flash now. This upgrade, I think, puts it firmly right up behind Pixel 2 as the second best smartphone camera. It's a, it's a real upgrade from the iPhone 10 and every other iPhone, actually a little more than I was expecting. And generally, the photos are great, as you'd expect, and I think the biggest change is the more aggressive and better HDR, thanks to their smart HDR, so the color science is really good, A plus colors, A plus dynamic range, pretty much every photo is corner to quarter sharp, and low light is pretty damn good too. I definitely want to get another side by side sort of test going. Got to get this iPhone alongside Pixel 3 when it comes out, probably Red Hydrogen and some other top dogs because obviously the minor difference comes down to opinion, but confirmed this is an amazing smartphone camera right out the box. Now you may have heard some talk about this improved portrait mode as well. Portrait mode on the iPhone started out kind of nearly as a joke. It was in this beta, it was pretty hacked together and sloppy at the beginning, but every year it gets better and better, like I wish Siri would, and this year it takes another leap. So portrait mode with these dual cameras uses the difference in distance between the cameras and Apple software to create a depth map, you might have heard that before, so it kind of segments the image into different layers of different distances from the camera. So when you blur the background of a photo with portrait mode, instead of just drawing sort of a crude mask around the foreground and then applying a big blur to the whole background, this portrait mode is actually blurring the parts further away from the camera more while blurring the closer parts less. It's much more realistic and closer to what a real bokeh from a bigger camera looks like. It's a subtle difference, but it's a massive improvement, again, from the first versions of portrait mode. So you take a portrait mode photo, you go into this editing, and you get this slider for changing the depth of field after the fact. Only uh, iPhone XS and XS Max will do this. Right off the bat, people compared it to Samsung's Live Focus because, of course, that's what it reminds us of. But when I compare them side by side, the, the whole generic blur of the Samsung versus the selective blur that keeps getting better, uh, it's pretty clear to me which one I prefer. And even though this is all purely software blur, just mimicking a bigger camera, it even seems to be adding a slight direction to the blur, like a sort of radial blur around the center of the frame, which is pretty impressive. So I don't use portrait mode very much because it's still hit or miss, but these improvements mean when it does hit, it can be pretty damn good. Also combine that with the fact that it's still the best video recording in a smartphone as well at 4K 60. Plus they've added stereo audio recording to support the speakers and it all adds up to a pretty powerful camera as we've come to expect from an iPhone. So that's where we're at. New specs, new camera, same software, 
same design. So this iPhone XS is everything we thought it would be. Really, honestly, the main upgrade, if you wanna call it that, would have to be the XS Max, the much bigger screen. This is the iPhone I've been using by choice for the past couple days, and it really does feel like a very different iPhone. A six and a half inch display in a body smaller than the Galaxy Note 9, I mean, that's all you really have to say to make it my favorite iPhone ever, but there are so many advantages to having a bigger screen. I've talked about them in previous big phone videos, and all of those still hold up with the big iPhone. Watching videos is better. Gaming is definitely better. Basically anything that involves wanting a nice viewing experience is improved. I've been a big phone person as long as I can remember, and so naturally the bigger iPhone is my favorite iPhone. And I just never thought I'd see a day where the iPhone is closer to the size of an iPad mini than the original iPhone, but that's what we got here. There are downsides of being a huge phone too. You can't forget them. And I've said this again about other big phones, the much bigger space it takes up in your pocket or your purse or wherever you keep it. And it's way less likely to be a one-handed phone for most people, let's be real. Reachability is gonna be way more important on this bigger phone than it ever has been. But that's what's up. This upgrade to me is all about the size of this 10s Max. If you have an iPhone 10, I can tell you right now, you don't need an iPhone 10s. You're fine. Even if you have a thousand dollar hole in your pocket and you've been itching for a faster iPhone and a better camera, upgrade to iOS 12 and buy an RX100 with that money. It's a much better camera. Boom, problem solved. Really the iPhone 10s is a great upgrade for people who have an older iPhone, an iPhone 7 or 8 or even older than that. Then again, so will probably be the iPhone 10R. So I'll we'll have to get that in house and see if that's about it in the full review but I have no problem recommending the iPhone XS for those people. But really, if you've been waiting for a bigger iPhone for all the mentions I talked about, and you have the money, it's expensive, just like last year. But if you're one of those people like me, then this is definitely the way to go. I'm a fan of the XS Max, and I recommend it. Give it a shot. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.